your sister, anyone. <laughs> we just we just want to do a little exercise. It's all part of it. So um, if you want to record it, that's fine. Amen. Right. Um, I want you to do something with your partner. Don't be too proud of this. It has to be one to one. One to one. Right? Children, one to one. Pair up. I don't want three people together. Amazing. So what you would do is, please listen. After the service today, you're going to tell your um, partner what you want to do. But this is how you're going to do it. You're going to spell it. For example, I want to go to Dom's to do groceries. I W A N T T O D U N N E S T O D O G R O C E I E S. Yeah? Alright. So I want you to take a minute to think. It can be a sentence, it can be two. But the partner has to listen. You know, we we're talking about listening last week. And the partner is going to now respond by spelling back to you what he wants to do or react to what you have said. Is that okay? If, for example, if what we're going to say is something that has to do with him responding personally to that, he will spell it out to you in res uh, to respond. And if it is what he wants to tell you, what he wants to do as well, he will spell it out to you. Is that clear? Yeah? Have you thought of what you want to do? In case you have no thoughts about it, you can quickly do that. Right. One, two, three, go. Because we are going to be referring to one or two things as we go. Amen. Glory to Jesus. Um, did your friend, your partner, did he understand what you said? If you have a problem with your partner, you didn't get what you said, just put up your hand. Your partner didn't quite get it. Fantastic. Amazing. All right. Father, we thank you. We give you glory. As we go into your word, we ask that you speak to every one of us. In Jesus' mighty name. May I say everything you want me to say. May I not go outside your boundary. Holy Spirit, please take over. In Jesus' mighty name. We're going to take our scripture reading from the book of 1 Samuel chapter 25. I would like for you to read the whole uh, chapter at home. But because of my time and because we want to make this um, as as quick as possible, um, I will just take a few verses. First Samuel chapter 25. I'm going to read from verse 18. Let me just take it from 18. First Samuel 25 from verse 18. And Abigail made haste, made haste, and took 200 loaves and two bottles of wine and five sheep ready dressed and five measures of patched corn and a hundred clusters of raisins and two hundred cakes of figs and lay them on the houses and she said unto her servants go on before me behold I come after you but she told her husband not she told not her husband neighbor and it was so as she rode on the house 
that she came down by the covert of the hill. And behold, David and his men came down against her, and she met them. Now David had said, Surely in vain have I kept all this, all that this fellow hath in the wilderness, so that nothing was missed of all that pertained unto him, and he hath required, requited me for evil. So, and more also to God unto the enemies of David, if I leave of all that pertain to him by the morning light, and anything that pissed, pisseth against the wall. And when Abigail saw David, she hasted and lighted off the earth, and fell before David on her face, and bowed herself to the ground, and fell at his feet, and said, Upon me, O Lord, uh, uh, upon me, my Lord, upon me, let this iniquity be, and let thy handmaid, I pray thee, speak in thy audience, and hear the words of thy handmaid. Let not, my Lord, I pray thee, regard this man of Belial, even Nabal, for as his name is, so is he. Nabal is his name, and folly is with him. But I, thy handmaid, son of the young man my, of my Lord, whom thou didst send. Now therefore, my Lord, as the Lord liveth, as, as, as thy soul liveth, seeing the Lord hath withholding thee from coming to shed blood, and from avenging thyself with thine own hand, now let thine enemies and they that seek evil to my Lord be as neighbor. And now, this blessing which thine handmaid hath brought unto my Lord, let it even be given unto the young men that follow my Lord, I pray thee. Forgive the trespass of thine handmaid, for the Lord will certainly make my Lord a sure house, because my Lord fighteth the battles of the Lord, and evil hath not been found in thee all these days. Yet a man is risen to pursue thee, and seek thy soul, but the soul of my Lord shall be bound in the bundle of life with the Lord thy God, and the souls of thy enemies shall, shall he sling out, and out of the middle of his sling, and it shall come to pass when the Lord shall have done my Lord according to all the, the good that he has spoken concerning thee, and shall have appointed thee ruler over Israel, that it shall be no grief unto thee, nor offense of heart to my Lord, either that thou hast shed blood costless, or that my Lord hath avenged himself. But when the Lord shall have dealt with my Lord, then remember thy handmaid. 32. And David said to Abigail, Blessed be the Lord God of Israel, which has sent thee to meet me this day. And blessed be thy advice, and blessed be thou, which has kept me this day from coming to shed blood, and from avenging myself my own hand. For indeed, as the Lord God of Israel liveth, which hath kept me back from hurting thee, except that thou hast hasted and come to meet me, surely there had not been left unto Nepal by the morning light, any that pissed against the wall. 35, which is the last verse. So David received of his other hand that which she had brought him and said to unto her, Go in peace to thy house. See, I have hearkened to thy voice and I have accepted thy person. Like I said, please read the whole thing at home. The Lord bless the reading of his word in our hearts. In Jesus' mighty name. In Jesus' mighty name. Amen. Amen. Last week, we were told that it's good to listen. And not only to listen, but to listen beyond what is being said. We said that a lot of strained relationships could have been mended if only we make efforts to listen. And more importantly, we said it's important that we listen to God. That when we come to Him, especially with our needs, after we have made a request known unto Him, that we are never in a rush to leave His presence, just in case He has something to say. 
Did any one of us practice any of those things during the week? That you practice, thank you. Amen. And did it help you in any way? All right, thank you. We want to put another block on that today. Because, of course, you can't spend your life listening alone. Especially in relationships. There are times that you need to speak back or to respond to what somebody has said. So we are going to be talking this morning on I should know how to speak. I should know how to speak. If I'm going to be involved in speaking at all, there is a responsibility on me to know how to speak. One of the reasons why you need to know this is because we are human beings that have feelings. And our feelings get hurt when people don't learn how to speak around us. There are times we are being hurt because of what people said to us. In fact, some of those words keep playing over and over again in our minds because we were really so badly hurt by them. There are times that people insult us. It's not as a matter of pride, but something in us says, no, you don't have to talk to me like that. It might be your superior, it might be your subordinate. Everyone wants to be treated with a bit of dignity. Is that right? So it's important in our relationships to know how to talk to people so that we don't hurt ourselves over and over again. It is wisdom to also know how to talk. We have been told that wisdom is the correct application of knowledge or simply knowing what, what to do, when to do it, and how to do it. So I want to talk. I know when to talk and then how to talk. That is wisdom. Nepal did something, if you read from earlier verses, in verse 4, 5, he insulted David. It wasn't because he was asking, David was asking for some refreshment that David came back to go and fight him. He was angry with the way he was spoken to. His servants went to him. They requested that he just be generous to them. And he spoke roughly to them. When one of the servants wanted to report back, he said, you know our boss, you know the way he speaks, nobody can talk to him. So he spoke roughly to the people of David. So when David got the message, he was very angry. He said, I protected these people. I did my best for them. Why would they talk to me? Why would uh, Nabal talk to me like this? Just look, let's quickly go back. Uh, 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 let me just quickly um, expand on that a bit. Um, the Bible says, David said in verse 6 or 5 he said David sent out ten young men and David said unto the young men go ye up to Carmel and go to Nebal, greet him in my name and you shall say to him that liveth in prosperity peace be both to thee and peace be to thine house and peace unto all that thou hast. And now I have heard that thou hast sharers. Now thy shepherds which were with us, we ought them not, neither were aught missing unto them. And all, all the while they were in Carmel, ask thy young men, and they will show thee. Wherefore, let the young men find favor in thy sight. 
for we come in a good day. Give I pray thee, whatsoever come to thine hand unto thy servant and unto thy son David. Isn't that polite enough? That's polite. Let Nebal answer in verse 10. Who is David? And who is the son of Jesse? There have been many servants now, nowadays that break away every man from his master. Shall I then take my bread and my water and my flesh that I have killed for my shares and give it unto them whom I know not where they be? His servants had reported to them about David and his men. He knew about David. David was not somebody unknown in this terrain. Remember the women were singing about David in 1 Samuel chapter 17, as, uh, chapter 18, after he took the head of Goliath. Everybody knew about David. So he knew David, but he just wanted to uh, flex his muscles. And one of the, in verse 14, and one of the young men told Abigail, neighbor's wife, saying, Behold, David sent messengers out to the wilderness to salute our master. And he railed at them. Another translation said he yelled at them. And the, but the men were good to us. They didn't hurt us. And we didn't miss anything. He says they were a war both unto us night and day. And while we were with them, keeping the sheep. What I'm trying to say is that the presentation of David didn't warrant any. Uh, response, negative response from neighbor. But he didn't know how to speak. So not knowing how to speak can bring trouble into somebody's life. It can bring evil into the person's life. And if you know how to speak, like you will read further with the story of Abigail, you can avoid unnecessary trouble you can avoid unnecessary trouble. In marriages, in places of work, everywhere you find yourself, things can be well managed if we all know how to respectfully speak to one another. And may I say to you that even your relationship with God is at stake if you don't know how to speak even to the Lord God Almighty. That was why Jesus gave us a pattern of how to approach God, how to speak to God, how to pray when we pray. Approach, how we say it, is very, very important. So wisdom prepares you for how to speak when you need to speak. It might be in an emergency situation, like the, way, the one Abigail found himself. Once you are a person that operates in wisdom, you will know how to speak at all times. God himself is a speaker. From the book of Genesis chapter 1 verse 3, you will see him speaking. And his speech is what are powerful. They give life. They invigorate us. Why do we study the word of God? When we hear the word of God, when we read the word of God, when he speaks to us, we are fired up because of how he speaks to us. And he expects his children to know how to speak. Isaiah chapter 50 and verse 4. Let's look at that. God expects all his children to know how to speak. The word of God says, the Lord has given me the tongue of the learned that I should know how to speak. The Lord has given me the tongue of the learned to know that I should know how to speak a word in season to him that is weary. He waketh me morning by morning. He waketh my ear to hear as the learned. God expects his children to know how to speak. So whether you are speaking to your colleague, 
You are speaking to your husband. You are speaking to your children. You are speaking to your wife. You are speaking to your sister, your brother. Your, the president of a nation. Or even the servant in your house. It is important for you to know how to speak. Knowing how to speak is everything. Knowing how to speak can determine whether you're going to be promoted or demoted. It can determine your relationships vertically or horizontally. Knowing how to speak. Your business and career can be determined. The I to rise can be determined by knowing how to speak. We have been told so many times that when you go to a place to buy your goods and they don't treat you nicely, we were told that you are likely to tell at least 10 people, don't go there, they are not good. Don't go there, their services are poor. Don't go there because you want to protect your people from the way they related with you. If they are good, you are likely to tell at least one person. When somebody is looking for such a service, they will go there. They are very good. So it can determine your height in your business. It can determine you know, what will happen in your relationship. Some children, they, pre they said, well, in my home, there's so much abuse, verbal abuse, that when I leave home, I'm not going to go back. So when the children eventually leave home, said, I'm not going back. I'm not going to uh, entertain that abusive relationship anymore. So marriages are separated, not because the man was punching the wife, but he was verbally speaking without thinking that you are talking to a human being. Praise the name of the Lord. And like I said, your relationship with God, what you will get from God or what you will not get, may be determined largely by how you speak to Him. Just look at the Bible and look at the heroes of faith. Look at Esther. See how she got what she wanted because she knew how to speak. Look at Ruth. See how she got what she wanted because she knows how to speak. Look at um, Solomon. Today is renowned for wisdom because he knew how to speak to God. Joseph, David, Abraham, look at every one of them. Even our Lord Jesus Christ. He leaves people startled. The same he speaks differently to all of us. He speaks as one who has authority, not as a scribe. So, God expects that every one of his children know how to speak. Now, let's quickly go back to our exercise this morning. And I want one or two people to tell me what you, uh, what you noticed when you were speaking and spelling it to your partner. Just anybody. Thank you, sir. Were you thinking ahead of the letter the person is going to say? No. Why were you just thinking ahead? Because you had to listen. Excellent. Any other observation? Thank you. Thank you, sir. Fantastic. Slowly. Now, when I'm speaking normally, I'm likely to just be but because I needed to get what this person was saying I had to do what slowly listen to what this person so you are speaking 
because the things you want to say, you cannot just say it like that. You miss your spelling. So you have to slow down. Amen. Any other observation? Any other one? Yes, ma'am. Okay. Attention. I saw on our eyes. Yes, ma'am. Fantastic. So there was, I, I saw everybody who were glued, eyes, well, you know, eyeball to eyeball. Everyone was eyeballing and listening. Amen. So you wouldn't realize that before you can respond, the first thing what you did was that you listened to understand. Amen. You did what? You listened to understand. Understanding what the person was about to say was the most important thing for you at that time. Because if you didn't understand what the person said, you are likely to respond inappropriately. So, in speaking, the most important lesson I would like you to learn is you must understand who is speaking to you. You must learn to understand what that person is saying. You are not ready to put anything in. You are not ready to, to jump ahead of this person. The first thing is let me understand what this person is saying. So you paid attention, eyeball to eyeball, listened attentively. The person who is speaking is not speaking, boo -boo 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 -boo. he's speaking because he's spelling it. And if you, if you are not focused on what you are spelling, you are likely to miss something. And the person who is listening is going to get a different interpretation of what you are trying to communicate. I said that to say this. A lot of times, it's not that we don't know what we want to say. But we didn't understand the person we are speaking to. Or what the person is asking. What the person wants from us. So before you speak, your first assignment is to learn to understand. That means that any, anything that you know about that person is not important at that time. What he's saying at that time, you are eager to first understand him and then based on your understanding, you respond. That was the problem with neighbor. He didn't understand the circumstances. In another translation, I think it's a message. It said there was holiday at that time and there was no way they could get, you know, uh, the refreshments. And we heard that we were having like a banquet. Just give us something. We had been kind to you. Very nicely packaged. But he thought, you know, this is a beggar. No. And talked roughly. But if you look at verse 3, the Bible says Abigail was a woman of the beautiful and great understanding. Another translation said she was beautiful and wise. Another one said she was beautiful and intelligent. Anyone you are comfortable with, the thing that Abigail had that made her wise and made um, neighbor to be foolish is understanding. She understood the terrain. She knew that David was a no-nonsense man. She knew that the hand of God was upon David. She knew that David was going to be the next king of Israel. You will see in a conversation with David. And she knew that 
a, hang, a hungry man is an angry man. So she didn't rush to go and speak to David. She first sent refreshments. She said, guys, every one of you carry food. Now we are going. She got on her head. She said, just send the, go ahead and bring the food. The man that was already hungry and saw food, you have disturbed the situation already. Tension would, you know, immediately go down. And then she was, as she saw him, she quickly knelt down, bowed down, and said, ah, I'm sorry, please forgive us. Please have mercy on us. And then she said, please, if you don't mind, let your servant take these things from us. Very humbly, very well managed, in an intelligent manner. Even if David was not a, a child of God, do you think he would have said no? The presentation, wisdom, the packaging. Praise the name of the Lord. I was in Malta some two, three days ago and I was coming back. As I flew back last night, I was sitting between two guys. I was sandwiched between them. So there was one on my left, one on my right. And usually I just want to continue with my work. So I was, you know, working as I was in the flight. And then the one on my right, I noticed he was just laughing. Then I, I looked at him, I saw that he had a little uh, uh, phone. Probably he was watching something, maybe it was hilarious, whatever. But he kept laughing. He got at a stage, he got uncomfortable for me, like, I mean, there are other people. He just kept laughing, laughing. So the one to my right said something. I thought he was saying something about the guy that was laughing, because he was laughing that you can't miss it. So, and I don't want to talk, so I just smiled. Then he repeated himself. So, obviously, my smile was not the answer he expected. So, he repeated himself. I said, pardon? I didn't hear what you say. She, he said, never mind. I said, okay. And then, he said something. Because I was coming back from Malta, there are Maltese in the aircraft. So, I thought maybe he, he was speaking Maltese to me. So, I said, are you speaking? Maltese? He said, no, Irish. I said, sorry, you're speaking to the wrong person. I don't have a word of Irish. Probably if he was Sister Joy, it would be easier. <laughs> Amen. Why was my answer inappropriate? Because I didn't understand. If I understood him, I'd probably be able to know what to say. But because I didn't understand, all I could say was, smile. <laughs> Amen. Now, what I'm trying to say is that the need for understanding cannot be overemphasized in any given situation when you find that you need to speak. Be it a message you have prepared. I want to go and meet my boss today. I want to go and speak to him about this thing. I'm not happy with it. Or I want to do this. You need to know how to speak. God has given you the tongue of the learned for one purpose. So that you know how to speak. Because knowing how to speak means everything. Praise the name of the Lord. So, we have seen a lot of people that are in high places. And we have no respect for them because of the way they speak to us. Do you know that there are some servants that don't respect their boss? They're just there because they have to make ends meet. If they have a way of doing anything contrary, they will do it because of the way they have been spoken to. So the fact that somebody is junior to you doesn't mean you can speak to that person anyhow. Knowing how to speak is very, very important in every area of life. This person is my friend, know how to speak to her. This person is my wife, my husband, know how to speak to her. We don't want to keep hurting each other. We want to be able to understand each other and work with one another.